Oh, it's on. Okay, good. Hello, everybody. If, if you'd all like to have a seat, we'll get started. Good afternoon. I'm Svetlana Lipanska, and as the CEO of New York City Health and Hospitals, Coney Island, I'm honored to welcome you here today to celebrate our campus transformation and to announce the new names of our campus and our hospital. We're very proud of this hospital's history and of being trusted to serve the residents of Coney Island. With our new name, we are opening our doors wider to welcome in old friends and new. Last week, the New York City Health and Hospitals Board of Directors unanimously approved a resolution to rename this campus as the New York City Health and Hospitals South Brooklyn Health. And our inpatient hospital, which will be comprised of the new 350,000 square foot building and the existing tower building, will be named the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Hospital after the late United States Supreme Court Justice. Before we get started, I would like to acknowledge and thank New York City Mayor de Blasio, New York City Health and Hospitals President and CEO, Dr. Mitch Katz, Clara Spera, the granddaughter of the late Justice Ginsburg, and her husband, Rory Boyd, for joining us today. I would also like to acknowledge our elected officials, union partners, board members, health and hospitals leadership, our community advisory board members, and community partners. We'd also like to acknowledge our development and construction partners who are delivering a very complicated project on time and on budget. The New York City Economic Development Corporation, our architects, NBBJ, and our construction manager, Turner and McKissick. Most of all, I would like to celebrate our staff members, doctors and nurses. Each and every one of them play a key role in caring for our patients. They are also a broad representation of the communities we are honored to serve every day. Having grown up in South Brooklyn, I've always understood the value and lifeline Coney Island Hospital provides to the surrounding community. Although located to adjacent uh, to Coney Island, our medical center is the closest comprehensive facility to approximately 875,000 New Yorkers who reside in South Brooklyn and beyond. With today's announcement, we are proud to acknowledge our closest neighbors and welcome to our door the broader communities for whom we provide care and those we hope to serve in the future. I am also extremely humbled that the Ginsburg family has entrusted New York City Health and Hospitals with their mother and grandmother's name and legacy. Justice Ginsburg stood for truth, equality, justice, and giving voice to the voiceless. These tenets resonate with me personally and are in full alignment with Health and Hospitals' vision to be a fully integrated, equitable health system that enables all New Yorkers to live their healthiest lives. Her example will challenge us to ensure that the new South Brooklyn Health and its Ruth Bader Ginsburg Hospital will be a healthcare provider of choice for all people from all communities and backgrounds in the South Brooklyn area. Our campus transformation will feature a new building, <laughs> uh, which will open in the summer of 2022. Our new names will be effective in the summer of 2022 with the opening of the new building. It will be comprised of an expanded emergency room, twice the size of what we have today, a surgical suite with eight state-of-the-art operating rooms, and which will now offer robotic surgery, uh, an endoscopy suite, a brand new labor and delivery unit, inpatient analysis, 80 private medical surgical beds, 60 behavioral health beds, interventional radiology, and much, much more. A new building, is designed to withstand not only the 100-year storm like Sandy, but a 500-year storm which we hope to never experience. No matter what nature sends our way, this new facility will allow us to keep our doors open and to care for our patients for generations to come. As we continue to build a new hospital, expand critical services, and develop plans to uh, invest in ambulatory care, 
we have a unique opportunity to rebrand and reintroduce the facility as the one-stop healthcare provider of choice for patients and residents of South Brooklyn and beyond. Thank you for celebrating this momentous occasion with us today. We're thrilled to continue on our transformation journey. It is now my honor to introduce Clara Sparrow, the granddaughter of the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Thank you. Uh, it is an honor to be here today. My family and I were moved when we learned that the inpatient hospital of the New York City Health and Hospitals South Brooklyn Health Campus would, joint, would be named after my grandmother, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. A daughter of Brooklyn, she was born in this borough 88 years ago. To my grandmother, equal access to health care was an essential right. Healthcare was an issue of equality, pivotal to an individual's autonomy to determine their life's course is the ability to get and to choose quality medical care. My grandmother believed that such health care should be available to all, regardless of wealth. A right is meaningless unless it is accessible to all and not just to the elite. South Brooklyn Health serves a large and diverse community of patients and needs. She would have been honored to be associated with that kind of public service. Thank you. And now it is also my honor to introduce the mayor. Clara, thank you so much. And I got to tell you, um, this is a Brooklyn moment. Uh, I'm just going to feel my Brooklyn feelings right now, everyone, because we are celebrating one of the greatest Brooklynites of all time. And we're celebrating in a Brooklyn way. Everybody together, talking about the ways we're going to help people. And we're going to make sure that everyone who needs health care gets it. Everyone. That's what Health and Hospitals is about. That's what this hospital is about. That's what this new, exciting reality we're creating is about. Now, Clara, thank you. You're doing something very special for all of us being here because we're feeling a connection right now to your grandma. And she did so much good in this world. And I like to say, when you look at her history as a proud Brooklynite, she went to our public schools, her activism started very young, even as a school child. There's something about this place we love that gives people a certain spirit, a spunk, a, an ability to go out there, do something, not be afraid. Brooklynites are fearless. Sorry, Carlina, we're gonna have to have a little Brooklyn <laughs> love song here. Brooklynites are fearless by nature. And your grandma is such a great example to us all as someone who just never back down. And I want to thank you, because you are carrying on the legacy your way, fighting for health care rights, fighting to make sure that people get equal rights to health care. Your work is not only carrying on her legacy, your work is priceless in this moment in history where we know there's too many people who don't get health care, still to not, not enough justice being done and you've picked up that torch and carried on. Let's thank Clara for all she is doing, everybody. So this hospital, named after one of the greatest New Yorkers, is going to be a symbol to everyone in Brooklyn, particularly in southern Brooklyn. This is a place to come for quality care. We are honored that the family agreed to join with us and have Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's name on this hospital. We're honored because we get to celebrate her greatness. But it's also a message to all Brooklynites and all New Yorkers that here's a place where you will be treated right. Here's a place where you'll be cared for. Here's a place where you matter. Because in my own personal way of summarizing the greatness 
of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, she thought everyone mattered. She didn't, she would not accept, honestly, she wouldn't accept a world in which women were not valued as much as men, or people of one race valued differently than another, or people with greater income valued more than people with less. Her egalitarianism, which is a true Brooklyn value, is something we honor. And she put herself on the line for it every day. Well, that name on this hospital is gonna say something to all Brooklynites. Here's a place where you'll get fairness and justice, where you'll get quality and love and respect. And that is very, very powerful. I wanna tell you, folks have gathered here today, I wanna to thank everyone, because this is one of those moments we'll remember. And thank you everyone for being a part of it, the community all together, celebrating this new moment. But I want to do some special thank yous for my colleagues in government because this announcement really synergizes beautifully with the work we're all doing to make our city healthy, to fight COVID back, to bring our city back strong. The rebirth of New York City is happening before your eyes. And here in the middle of this moment, we announce something great, a new hospital with the most powerful of names showing that you cannot stop this city. You just can't hold New Yorkers down. You cannot stop us. That's the beauty of this place. But I also want to say we got some real help and we need it. And it's such an important reality for New York City and for Brooklyn that one of our own is one of the preeminent leaders of the United States House of Representatives because we talked about many times during the long fight to get the stimulus funding making sure it would come here directly in New York City, not someplace else, but here to help us recovery. And Congress member Hakeem Jeffries, you did the deluxe version of stimulus. Thank you. <laughs> and we needed help from Albany. We needed help to make sure we could bring back our schools in particular, because we all know there's nothing more precious than our children. And if our schools come back, our city comes back. And we got historic support. Things that a lot of us have been fighting for for the last 20 years happened this year in Albany. One of the leading voices, Brooklyn's own assembly member, Steve Simberwitz. Thank you. And my friends in the city council, who every step of the way, as we fought back, as we fought COVID and we fought to recover, were there making sure the resources were there, supporting efforts to get people vaccinated, but to do it equally, to make sure that vaccination was just as available in Coney Island, as in the Upper East Side, in the Lower East Side, as it is on Wall Street. And that's what we did, vaccination everywhere. And right now, New York City, and I'm proud of this, we are leading the nation, literally. We said it was time to have a vaccination mandate so everyone in public service would be safe and help keep us safe. We said we would do a $100 incentive to make sure every New Yorker had an added reason to get vaccinated. The minute we did those things, it started to be emulated. The President of the United States said, let's do those incentives. All over the country, public sector, private sector followed those examples. And now, what we've said with the key to NYC pass, we want people to enjoy this beautiful city, the, the, the indoor dining, the entertainment, everything, but we need you to be vaccinated. I want to say again, deep appreciation to our President Joe Biden. I put that idea out there, he endorsed it within hours, and now you see it happening all over the country. The vaccine mandates, respectful, but necessary to fight COVID once and for all. So we are going to keep changing things and we've had amazing help from council members, Mark Traeger and Carlina Rivera. Thank you to both. And I will conclude with this. So someday someone's gonna do a list of everybody from Southern Brooklyn who changed the world. And it's gonna be a very, very long list. In fact, we, even as Brooklynites, even as New Yorkers, don't even know some of the people who are particularly famous who have had a big impact. We don't even realize where they are from. I'll give you an example. We're doing these amazing uh, concerts 
a couple weeks from now, the homecoming concerts, the one in Central Park literally is going to rival Woodstock in terms of lineup. It's unbelievable. Who put it together? Clive Davis, legendary music industry figure, one of the greats of modern music in America. Guess where he's from, everybody? Southern Brooklyn. He's graduated of the New York City Public Schools. I'm sorry, I'm on a rant. Uh, I, I wish I could think of another current example of someone powerful. Oh, the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, who went to Fort Hamilton High School. Our Treasury Secretary from Southern Brooklyn. So I could go on and on and on. One of the greatest of all time, unquestionably, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And we feel her. One last thing I want to say about her. When you say the name, you feel something. You feel emotion about someone who did so much good and fought so well for so long. But I got another favorite Southern Brooklynite. And uh, he left us for a little while. He went to California. I don't know why. But he saw the light and came home. What he did not know was he was coming home just a year or two before a global pandemic. But can I tell you, Thank God Mitch Katz came back to New York City when we needed him. So Mitch Katz is in that category with Bernie Sanders and Chuck Schumer and so many others. A few, few words into his first sentence, you know where he's from. And I say that with respect and honor. But this guy, I have turned to him every day since COVID began. He has never failed me. He has shown love and appreciation for the great people who work here and at all the other H&H &H facilities. He has been their field marshal in battle and they can feel his presence. He sees patients himself. He is at the front line. He has been indispensable. We would not have gotten through COVID as well as we have. We would not be in this fight today, except for the person I introduced to you, Dr. Mitch Katz. <laughs> They are phenomenal pictures of what's going to be our phenomenal future. Uh, the mayor, I know, has to leave relatively soon, but before he does, I have to want to make sure that he hears me and my appreciation that uh, had it not been for him bailing out health and hospitals at the cost of hundreds of millions of dollars, there would have been nothing for me to come home to. Right, long before I came back to my home world, um, the mayor had to face a crisis, and other people might have said, I don't know, Philadelphia closed their public system, Boston closed their public system, Sacramento closed their public system, Milwaukee closed their public system. This is hundreds of millions of dollars. And instead, he went to OMB and said, we got to put in the money to save the system. And that's why we've had a system here through COVID. And I think COVID has proven what a smart investment that was. And it, has paid back big dividends to you. And, and my other thank you has been that I've been on the phone, so what, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in the crisis last March, and what the mayor always was saying is, get whatever you need. Never did I hear, well, how much is it gonna cost? How much is that extra staffing? At, at the height of the 
uh, pandemic in last March, we had 6,000 additional people working for health and hospitals because so many people were out sick and we had tripled the size of our ICU. And never once did anyone uh, say from the mayor's office or himself, well, Mitch, how, is, how much is this going to cost us? Uh, how are we going to pay for this? What about all that new, you know, all of the PPE? How, never once. It was always about, Mitch, you got to do whatever is necessary to save lives. We will figure out later how to pay for that. So I thank you, sir. I thank Carlina, who always would send me little texts. Uh, Mitch, how you doing? You know, is there anything you need on behalf of the hospital? Mark, I appreciated when I needed your help. You were there. So, so thanks to, to my city family so much. Um, Coney Island Hospital was my community hospital growing up. And I love the name change, right, because I would have never said I was from Coney Island. Nothing against Coney Island. I was from Sheepshead Bay, right? Sheepshead Bay is about two miles north of here. Thank you. But, but we wouldn't have said we were Coney Islands. We would have said we were Sheepshead Bay. But my great-great-grandmother got care here. My grandmother and grandfather, my parents, my siblings, we all multiple generations got care here, and I think the South Brooklyn name captures that we love Coney Island, but we're more than Coney Islands. Uh, as Svetlana, another South Brooklyn person has said, uh, right, we, we are a big catchment area. Um, so I love the new name, and of course, being able to honor the great justice is just amazing. And I think it's everything that Health and Hospitals wants to be and is a place for everybody that seeks to care for everybody regardless of their background. Uh, so thank you all. Thank you to my doctors and my nurses and everyone here. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'd, I'd just like to take a moment and acknowledge and thank the elected officials who have joined us today. It's only through your advocacy that we're able to do the things that we need to do here every day. Uh, we're joined today by uh, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, Council Member Mark Traeger, uh, Council Member Carlina Rivera, uh, Ryan Lynch, the Chief of Staff uh, for Brooklyn Borough uh, President Eric Adams, uh, Congresswoman uh, Nicole Maliotakis and uh, Lori Windsor, who is her Brooklyn director. Uh, Assembly Member Frontis uh, is here represented as well, as well as Assembly Member Simberwitz, Helene Weinstein, and Diane Brown, who is the district leader for the 46th Assembly District. Thank you all for everything that you do for us every single day. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Congress Member Hakeem Jeffries to say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor and a privilege to uh, be here with the Ginsburg family, and uh, we're so thankful for the life and legacy of the great uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and to my colleagues in government, of course, the mayor who's been uh, a tremendous partner with the congressional delegation during this very difficult time. My good friend and colleague Mark Traeger, who's done a phenomenal job over the last eight years in the city council, and Carlina, and of course Steve Simbowitz, who has a very important job uh, leading the housing committee in the New York State Assembly. Swetlana, we're thankful uh, for you uh, and your tremendous leadership as CEO, uh, to Dr. Katz, and certainly to uh, the healthcare heroes, the frontline workers who through all of the trials and tribulations of the pandemic were here to provide tremendous care to the people of South Brooklyn. We thank you, we thank you, and we thank you. And you deserve this state-of-the-art facility named after such a tremendous legend. As the mayor indicated, Brooklyn has given the world many things, uh, and I can't capture everyone, the mayor didn't capture everyone, but we've also given the world Shirley Chisholm. We've given the world Junior's Cheesecake. We've given the world the Coney Island Boardwalk. We've given the world Dr. Anthony Fauci from South Brooklyn. Of course, we've given the world 
Biggie Smalls, the notorious B.I.G., and above all else, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the notorious R.B.G. And so we're thankful for her. We can't think of a better person to name this state-of-the-art facility after. And I was proud as a new member of Congress in 2013 to work with Senator Schumer to pass the Superstorm Sandy Relief Bill that included in it the FEMA money which provided this new hospital with $923 million to create this state-of-the-art facility. And it couldn't be named after a more appropriate person when you think about the fact that our community was hit hard during Superstorm Sandy with a lot of devastation and hit hard by COVID with a lot of devastation. But Ruth Bader Ginsburg's life embodies the notion that a knockdown is different than a knockout and that a setback is nothing more than a setup for a comeback. This extraordinary jurist who on the eve of her graduation from Madison as the valedictorian couldn't even attend because her mom tragically passed away. But she overcame that adversity and went on to Cornell and did incredibly well. And then to Columbia by way of Harvard graduated at the top of her class, best law schools in the nation, and not a single law firm would hire her because she was a woman, notwithstanding how brilliant she was. Faced obstacle after obstacle after obstacle, but dedicated her life to hope and healing and making America the best that it can possibly be. That's what the new South Brooklyn Health Center will be all about help and healing and health care and making this community the strongest that it can possibly be. God bless Ruth Bader Ginsburg. God bless this hospital. And God bless the United States of America. Well, that is difficult to follow, but I'd like to in invite up Con uh, Council Member Mark Traeger to say a few words. How do you follow Congressman Hakeem Jeffries? Not easy, not easy. It is my honor uh, to be with you all today. This is an extraordinary, historic announcement and moment here for our Southern Brooklyn community. By the way, Mark Traeger is proud Southern Brooklyn as well. First generation American. I will not be on that list, but just notable mention somewhere, Congressman. Uh, there is so much synergy with this historic announcement, uh, naming of this beautiful hospital center after Justice Ginsburg, uh, because I have to kind of share the story. As a former teacher, I like to put things into historical context. Um, when we first took office in 2014, as the congressman mentioned, and by the way, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, Senator Schumer, are champions for Brooklyn. They delivered, they delivered over $1.6 billion to the New York City public hospital system, $900 million of which came here to Coney Island Hospital. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> Justice Ginsburg talked about fighting for what you believe, but in a way where others work with you, others will follow you. And that's the spirit that we needed to get this project done. Because as the new Sandy recovery chair back in 2014, there was still a lot of work to do to get that money coming to the public hospital system. I'll never forget, there was over a billion dollars announced to a private hospital, but public hospitals were still waiting for their fair share. And it was that collective spirit with our extraordinary federal partners with our state partners, some members Simberwitz, some members uh, Weinstein, others who are very helpful. And of course, in the city council, Karina Rivera, thank you for your help and, and, and for your mentorship. But 
I want folks to know about this hospital staff. Dr. Katz, you talked about it. I want to double down on it. During Superstorm Sandy, when many folks were understandably rattled, this was a major storm, people were dropped off to the hospital door when the hospital itself was undergoing major emergencies. To the credit of the staff of Coney Island Hospital, no one lost their life that night. Let's give the staff a major round of applause. <laughs> Justice Ginsburg talked about equity and not just equality. Equity and equality. This is a neighborhood, this is a part of New York that's incredibly diverse. And again, we're a very diverse city, but this is very diverse here. Folks that might face language barriers, folks that might face cultural issues. During this pandemic, I cannot begin to tell you the amount of barriers this hospital knocked down to help vaccinate thousands and thousands of seniors, folks who speak languages other than English and the Russian-speaking community and others, because of the incredible work of Svetlana and the entire team. Let's give the entire team at Coney Island Hospital a round of applause. And Congressman, you, 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 you took the words uh, because my former students also referred to her, referred to her as the notorious RBG I, 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 at times as well. But it was a spirit of making sure that we're all part of this together. Uh, it was a spirit of fighting hard for what you believe and having others join you, understanding equity and equality, understanding that this is a critical social safety net for our families in this community as the Constitution is for our society, this is a place that opens its doors to everyone, regardless of your, if you're uninsured, underinsured, unemployed, no income, the doors are always open for all. And I am proud of this huge announcement today. There's more money coming to the hospital, which we'll announce in due time. But this is a testament to the spirit of working together, fighting alongside each other, towards equity and justice and fairness for all. God bless you and thank you so much. I'd like to welcome and invite up uh, Carlina Rivera to make a, a few remarks. Hello everyone. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, it's very nice. So I, I just wanna thank Mayor de Blasio, I don't know if he's still here, but clearly has been an outstanding leader on this issue, Dr. Katz, Velana, all of you, the entire team at Coney Island for having me here. This is a truly, truly momentous day. And of course to Clara, um, you are incredible and I know that it's such a special moment to know that we all treasure this beloved New Yorker and someone who you must know is a clear personal inspiration for me. So it's an honor to celebrate this occasion with all of you. The completion of the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Hospital will bring a world-class public health care facility to South Brooklyn at a very critical time in our city. COVID-19 has shown us that we must invest, not divest, from quality inpatient care services and of course strength to strengthen our healthcare safety net. And h, h has been doing that. You heard a little bit about what we went through during the pandemic, but whether it's through new facilities like this one or the new COVID centers of excellence, the launch of NYC Care, or just by being a leader amongst New York City hospitals during COVID. And I know the whole team here at Coney took on so much. You did incredible, incredible work to help patients from across the five boroughs who were actually transferred here during the pandemic. And we thank you for that. And the work you've done will not be forgotten. And the quality of care at h, h shows exactly why all New Yorkers must be able to access low or free health care. It is clear, it is a human right, and it should be done in facilities like this every single day. And I know there's been a lot of Brooklyn talk, a lot of Brooklyn love. I feel that right here. I know I'm just a Puerto Rican girl that was born at Bellevue. But when my family came here from Puerto Rico, they landed in Bushwick. And I will tell you that 
years later, decades ago, on an Independence Day, Coney Island Hospital would go on to save my uncle's life. So we have a personal story here, and I want to make sure that we continue to honor that legacy. And as a, as a council member, I will tell you, we have done great things at this facility, thanks to one of my colleagues in the council, Mark Traeger, from focusing on resiliency to making sure that we highlight women's health as a very intersectional issue. And where is that more appropriate than honoring this woman right here? And I have to say, when, when her famous quote on the amount of appropriate women on the Supreme Court, I can't help but be excited that we will be getting 29 women in the city council come next year. So whether it's on women's health or anything at all, I have to thank you, Councilmember Mark Traeger, and of course the Congressman, been such a champion of Coney Island for years and was so critical to this project happening, and in particular, his advocacy for a climate resilient Coney Island hospital has been so important, and I'm looking forward to the full flood, flood protection measures being completed over the next two years. And so just like Justice Ginsburg, I'm sure this new hospital and the entire South Brooklyn Health Campus will be a symbol of resilience and perseverance for generations to come. And I couldn't think of a better way to honor such an icon. And I look forward to advocating for future investments in h and just like this. Let's continue to build this hospital's legacy. Thank you everyone for sharing this moment and allowing me to be in this space. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you, council member. The re resilience lives here every day. Every day we, we open our doors and take care of patients, and thank you so much for acknowledging that. I'd like to uh, invite up uh, Assembly Member Simberwitz to make a few remarks. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, to the mayor, to Dr. Katz, Svetlana, and to the Southern Brooklyn team, to my colleagues, um, my former colleague in the, uh, the assembly, now Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, who is certainly happy that he's not in Albany at this point, to Councilman Mark Traeger, who has never had a fleeting thought about wanting to be in Albany these days. And we thank you for that, or appreciate. And Councilwoman, thank you for all the great work that you have done for Southern Brooklyn and to all the doctors and nurses who are part of the new center. Throughout our history, reinvention has always been an important, an important part of growth. This is true for people, for communities, for nations, and institutions like Coney Island Hospital. Reinvention creates a path towards the future. Today's renaming builds upon Coney Island Hospital's lo long history and many strengths to embrace the exciting promise of 21st century medicine. Everyone in Southern Brooklyn, people of all ages, all ethnicities, will be able to come to this beautiful complex to meet a wide variety of their medical needs. With accessibility to high quality health care a top priority, it is only fitting that New York City Health and Hospitals rename this inpatient hospital in honor of Ruth Bader, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a scholar, jurist, and hometown icon who spent her celebrated career fighting for equality and justice for all. Congratulations to everyone at Health and Hospitals and the best of luck to everyone at the newly named Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg Hospital. Thank you very much, everyone.
Thank you, Assembly Member. We have so many friends out, in, out here in front of us visiting with us today. Uh, so many supporters that uh, uh, we, and we cannot acknowledge everyone, but I just like to acknowledge a few because they represent this area, Coney Island. And so I'd like to acknowledge the, the Kiwanis Club, the Coney Island Alliance, the Be Proud organization, uh, Ari Kagan, the district leader from the 45th district. And I would like to bring up somebody who represents all of those folks and so many others uh, here in our community. Uh, Queenie Hewlett is a, a patient of ours as well as a member of our uh, uh, community action board. Uh, and she represents all of us. She represents the people who use our services uh, and the people who advocate for us. And so, Queenie, I would like to invite you up. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, all. My name is Queenie Hewling. I am pleased to join you all today to celebrate the opening of NYC Health and Hospital slash South Brooklyn Health Campus and renaming Coney Allen Hospital for one of the most iconic celebrated Brooklynites, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It's been quite a journey to get here, and we are ready to take full ownership of this ultra-modern hospital. I've been in this community for a long time, and I can speak from multiple perspectives about Coney Allen Hospital, an advisor, advocate, and patient. As a former chair and member of the Community Advisory Board, and as the president of South Brooklyn chapter of National Action Network, I listened as our neighbors called for better health services and facilities. Many felt that the lack of beauty in the former center mirror, the quality of care. Today, there is an answer. As the former chair and a member of Community Board 13 Health Committee, I also had a front row seat to the dilemmas that our elected and appointed official face while working tirelessly to find solutions that address health disparity for some of the most vulnerable people in Coney Island. Today, they see the fruits of their efforts. As a patient, I gained the most insight into what members of our community face as they expressed Coney Island Hospital being a place of last resort. While I experienced being cared for by some of the most compassionate nurses and doctors, it was difficult to convince members of the community that the finest services was also available to them. Today, that changes. I can let them know that we have a facility that is equally beautiful with high quality care they can assess. We have what we deserve a state-of-the-art facility where everyone can get the best available health care. Not only that, but in this community, Ruth Bader Ginsburg stands tall. She was a champion of social justice before it was popular. She championed women's rights and women's health before there was buzzwords for that. She used her brilliance and her platform as a scholar and Supreme Court judge to champion cause to improve the lives of ordinary people. We are aesthetic that her legacy will be preserved in this part of Brooklyn, Coney Island. In closing, let me express my appreciation to all those who had a part in making the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Hospital possible in Coney Island. Thank you legislators, HHC, executive director and staff, community leaders. On behalf of our community, thank you. Thank you, Queenie. Now I'd like to invite up a woman who does not need an introduction in South Brooklyn, 
uh, the president of our community advisory board, Teresa Scava. I'm not as young as I look. Good afternoon. My name is Teresa Scavo, and I am the chair of the Coney Allen Hospital Community Advisory Board. On behalf of our advisory board, I wholeheartedly support Coney Island's rebranding strategy, which includes renaming the Coney Allen Hospital campus as NYC Health and Hospital South Brooklyn Health and its new inpatient hospital due to open in the summer 2022 after the late United States Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. In the fall of 2020, Coney Allen Hospital convened internal and external focus groups with diverse groups of hospital leaders, community leaders, elected officials, and hospital stakeholders to better understand if a rebranding of the facility would be welcomed and embraced. The process also helped to identify a name that established a better connection between the hospital's past, present, and future, and encouraged local stakeholders to feel a positive connection to the facility which is a true asset to our community. Today, I am proud to see the fruits of the 75,000 residents who call Southern Brooklyn home. Thank you. We wouldn't be having this event today if it wasn't for the advocacy and the support of our, the New York City Health and Hospitals Board. Today, it, the board is represented by two of our staunchest supporters and uh, incredibly detailed, wonderful women who have helped us uh, get to here to this important day today. And so I'd just like to acknowledge Frida Wong and Sally Panera, who are here on behalf of all of our board members. Thank you, ladies. And lastly, and incredibly importantly, I'd like to invite up Dr. Goldberg. He's the president of our medical and dental uh, staff, and he represents the incredible physicians who work so hard to take care of our patients today. And every single day, <laughs> Dr. Goldberg. Thank, thank you, Svetlana. So I am uh, honored to be the uh, Mariano Rivera of today's prestigious ceremony and present some closing uh, remarks. Hopefully this will be a one, two, three uh, inning, uh, one, two, three, a victory for sure for the community, a victory for the city, a victory for the hospital and for the public at large. So first pitch, this is a watershed moment in so many ways and especially for healthcare transformation. The medical and dental staff of the up, up and coming South Brooklyn Health, Ruth Bader Ginsburg Hospital is ready to meet the moment and the challenges. Second, whether it be a future hurricane, an earthquake, and we did actually have an earthquake here a few years ago, or uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, our healthcare team, nurses, doctors, support staff, and the institution emerges more resilient than ever and ready to serve. And third, we are truly, truly inspired by the life and legacy of the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We will carry the principles and the values she promoted with us in the everyday practice of medicine. In closing, Hippocrates once said, Wherever the art of medicine is loved, there is also a love of humanity. Well, we love what we do. Thank you, and let's all be excellent to one another.
Thank you, Dr. Goldberg, for so eloquently representing our doctors, nurses, and all of us here who work so tirelessly every day to take care of patients. Uh, and with that, I will conclude this uh, momentous ceremony, and I'll invite those of you who are interested to take a tour of the new emergency room in the new building. Um, it is still a construction site, so uh, for everybody's safety, we will take folks up in, in smaller groups, but we will take multiple groups up. So if you're interested in a tour, uh, please join us. And other than that, thank you so much for being with us here today. It, it's a wonderful occasion and the beginning of a great future. All right. Uh, Clara, uh, we'd love to take some photos with you and Svetlana and Dr. Katz.